morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll confine myself to ten. Uh, good morning. Uh, in fact, uh, this presentation is going to be the gist of uh, my work as I did as a part of my PhD, then my work in SASE as well as now the kind of work that we are doing in detail and now using remotely sensed data. So basically, this area, actually uh, in this presentation, I would like to actually compare how Himalayas have behaved vis-a-vis -vis the other parts uh, where we have the higher altitudes. In fact, uh, now this uh, uh, graphic uh, depicts the different altitude, high altitude zones in different parts of the world. Now we have uh, lots of studies which have been made uh, in different parts. In fact, there was a group which was formed and uh, we were supposed to, in fact, I was also part of that group which we were, were supposed to uh, meet in Austria and uh, I was supposed to represent India from uh, from the Himalayan uh, perspective, but unfortunately I couldn't go there. But uh, a lot of work was reviewed in that particular group where uh, Rocky is uh, here, then Andy is here, then uh, Tibetan uh, Plateau, then Hima Himalayan to some extent they refer to it, and some other parts were discussed and they talked about what we call the elevation dependent warning. Now, uh, basically, though, uh, the worldwide observations, they indicate that, yes, definitely, the temperatures have risen with reference to greenhouse gases, which everybody knows, and such effects are amplified in high latitude areas. As you go to the low latitude areas, naturally, the rate of warming is but, uh, definitely lower. And again, there is a growing evidence that this particular uh, committee found that uh, the warming is amplified in with the elevation in the mountain environment, particularly a lot of evidences they have gathered, a lot of works have been carried out in Andes, Rockies, then uh, Tibetan Plateau, and yes, definitely the temperatures have risen, the mountains have warmed to a large extent, and the rate of warming that they have found is increasing with altitude. So that is what they called as they called it as a uh, elevation dependent warming. Now, either this by the way, of course, lots of changes are supposed to occur as a result of that. We expect a lot of changes in the mountain ecosystems, cryospheric systems, the hydrological regimes are supposed to change, and it is going to affect the biodiversity. Of course, uh, that committee uh, or the scientists who had gathered there, they had access to the data from very low altitudes. Because the database, in fact, as you can see from this uh, slide, out of all these stations, only 3% were above 2000. That means most of the data was from the altitudes lower than 2000 meters and only 0.7%, 3,000, and hardly any observations above 5,000. That means whatever is happening in Himalayas was not even considered there because they didn't have the data. Of course, I didn't represent there because I couldn't go there. Uh, but this is what actually, exactly they have reported. Now, there is a time for us to have a relook at what Himalayas are undergoing with reference to the other parts of the uh, world where you have high altitudes. Now, the, my effort in this particular presentation is to give you some overview, some perspective with reference to the Himalayas. And this is basically, and of course, we are expecting lots of changes. And these are, these are two groups, you know, Pepin et al. And of course, the whole work has been summarized in two good review papers by Pepin, which has come in the natural uh, uh, climate change, and the Rangwala also. This gentleman has uh, a paper in climatic change, which has, and here we here refer to the our work also, the Himalayas, the uh, Nimri's work, then you have got Shekhar and all, where Himalayas, how they are behaving, what are the actual uh, rate, uh, rates of change in temperature. In fact, uh, if you talk about the other parts of the world, naturally you know that temperatures have gone up, but there the minimum temperatures have increased with reference to the maximum temperature. Whereas in Himalayas, is the other way around, where the maximum temperature, both the maximum as well as minimum, they have increased in the last 140 years but the maximum temperature has increased more as compared to the, uh, the minimum. That means the daytime warming is much, much more prominent than the nighttime warming. So this is how they have reviewed this work. Now basically now we would like to do, uh, try to analyze the situation with reference to the Himalayas. Now, of course, there are lots of mechanisms there to try to explain they have put forth to explain the central thing. 
the most prominent is basically the snow albedo surface based feedbacks of course over a period of time because of the presence of snow itself makes a difference and that changes the energy balance and that's the reason why you have got such kind of warming process but himalayas is totally different uh, you know paradoxical thing is happening which i would like to discuss in my presentation where temperatures are increasing all right but only up to certain limit and after that a lot of cooling is taking place a lot of uh, the decrease in rate of temperature rise is taking place and that that's something which has to be studied from the point of view of the uh, uh, environmental science there's really the atmospheric physicist can help us out in giving some physical basis to this particular phenomenon and of course again the other <coughs> processes are the and aerosols uh, particularly in the mid latitude glaciers it has been given as the second most important mechanism which can explain this ew edw the elevation dependent warming of course this is our work as a my, my work as a phd student a long back this is how the winters have warmed substantially in himalayas of course monsoons have also warmed but over a period of time it is a winter warming which takes the cake which has literally been a prominent uh, warming process and this is what has been reflected here which has of course reflected in the reduced snowfall as well as the shrinkage of winters in himalayas <coughs> as you can see from this slide uh, and of course basically now as a result of shrinkage of winter now there have been quite a few evidence uh, quite a few incidences where the spurts of you know heat waves they have also been prominent in winters and those are the ones which also have created a lot of problems in fact the in my interest in the warming in at, at those altitudes was triggered by two incidences two uh, 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 two actually mass wastage events particularly when we lost some people there and that exactly revealed how exactly the process worked now i'll try to explain with the help of few diagrams here now this is how basically i don't know why it's now uh, if you just see the sp uh, spatio temporal variation in the warming process now p panjal himalayas particularly the windward side they have warmed uh, substantially and this follows what the others have also seen in andes in rockies and alps here as, as you can see here basically this particular thing the temperature rise this is a rate of temperature rise and this is the altitude that means as altitudes have risen the rate of temperature rise has also increased particularly this is true only on the windward side of peak pandal himalayas whereas this is not true when you go to us the leeward side or in the greater himalayas but grass we don't have much of a data because there is only one station here but here also we have got luckily we have got because of sas's hard work there we have got lot of stations there where the data has been collected for last at least four decades and this data if you analyze it it gives you a good insight into the phenomenon of high altitude warming in the himalayas this is how the grass temperatures have increased and again if you, if you go to the karakoram himalayas this is how at lower altitudes particularly uh, at this altitude as well as this altitude the temperatures have risen substantially but if you go further up naturally you have the maximum temperature this is basically at the altitudes which are beyond equilibrium line altitudes beyond we can you can call it as a zero isotherm uh, zero degree isotherm this is how basically the temperatures are risen and this is how the temperatures are that means there's a continuous decrease in temperatures now if we just analyze the rates of increase at different altitudes well if you can see the all these red mark regions they are showing the decrease in a negative sense that is the cooling taking place here but if you just see the summers naturally most of the time it is a positive in summers yes definitely the rate of increase is there but it's not following the global trend as you go higher in altitude the rates have decreased and of course in winters it is the other way around it is basically the rates have gone into negative side to the decrease that is the cooling taking place at those altitudes so this is something which has to be explained <coughs> this how at different altitudes so we have tried to find out the temperature rises and in fact as you can see here all they are basically showing a decreasing trend particularly uh, towards the and again it has something to do with the uh, the equilibrium line attitude is how it has varied over a period of time as you can see here we have used the landsat data there will be a presentation uh, in detail on this particular aspect whereas this equilibrium line itself has gone 
up, you know, and that's, that's the basically, and all these stations which are showing a negative trend, they are located well above these altitudes. That this is the altitude line, this is where we actually uh, uh, sort of uh, map the uh, equilibrium line in last 2016, and all these stations are above that. Well, these are the two, stay, uh, two events which triggered. Now the very peculiar thing is basically the whole mass has come down. I'll just finish it in two minutes. The whole mass has come down, giving rise to this particular avalanche which killed that person there. And, these are the, and then another event was this particular event, uh, not there. All these two events happened in thick winter. So you cannot ascribe them to warming in summer. The thick winter basically. And this actually, these have to be studied in greater details. These are the two events. We found that the spurt in temperature rise, basically, or these two events were associated with a sudden increase in temperature. That means the heat waves, you know, the warmer wavelengths, uh, warm, warmer uh, waves, you know, they were in, in, uh, in fact because of these. Do you had those events at those altitudes, particularly during the winters, and that is something which is basically is causing the high altitude warming at those altitudes. This is how basically uh, we have mapped the glacier surface velocities also, and this is how the temperatures also we try to map, and suddenly all those minimum temperatures basically, they were, and all these those both events must have occurred in the night because. Uh, the temperatures were well above the normal in, uh, during those two events. And suddenly, you know, uh, if you try, try to find out what exactly could be the reason, that, that means the temperatures are decreasing. And naturally, you know, you cannot expect when the temperatures are decreasing, that means everything is frozen. You cannot expect rock avalanches to trigger. But the rock avalanches have all actually occurred. It is basically the land surface temperatures which have warmed up. Now, there is a paradox here. You are, generally the uh, uh, land surface temperature should be the function of the air temperatures also. But here geothermal flux could be playing a major role because of the thinning of the ice sheet, thinning of the ice apparatus at the top which are broken down which are given rise to the ice avalanches. <coughs> this is how we have mapped this. Now just to conclude that is there is a perceptible evidence of climate change in North India. Significant warming during the winters except in Karakura Himalayas, particularly at the higher altitudes. Of course, and sudden warm temperature events in winters, the incidences of rock avalanches and ice avalanches, and you need to study the kind of war, the cooling that is taking place at those altitudes, the winter cooling at those altitudes. Now, this phenomenon has to be better understood in terms of the atmospheric uh, circulations in that particular area. Now, energy action processes. Now, of course, uh, we have started the collaboration with Jenny. I already discussed with the IIT and Jenu how. The physical basis can be provided to this kind of anomalous situation. And overall, warming basically leading to what you call degradation, incidences of debris flows, and basically the debris flows are occurring in the month of August and September, and the rock avalanches and ice avalanches they are occurring in the month of uh, winter months. Thank you so much.